What's up everyone? This is Maximilian, and you're watching the Street Fighter Cross Tekken Gem System Breakdown. The gem system for Street Fighter Cross Tekken was announced some time ago, but we did not get any full and concrete information for the details of this new system mechanic until just recently. So there's been a lot of opinions from the fighting game community and fighting game players alike about the impact the gem system will have on Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And before we get into those finer details about what the gym system is actually going to do to the Street Fighter Cross Tekken engine, I wanted to talk about the game itself that was before the gem system was announced. Uh, luckily, I've had some time with a few different builds of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, more notably the E3 build, the build that was at EVO, and the build that I recently played with when doing the Cross the Line interview. Um, and surprisingly, during all three of these builds, none of them had the gem system, but the build themselves, like every single time I played it, it, the game changed pretty drastically. There was some element that was either being added or changed or adjusted, and I think that's one of the things that Street Fighter Cross Tekken is having a problem with the community right now, and that it's it was too much too fast. Um, we got this period now of delay where we're able to digest some of the stuff that's happening and we're getting some information finally about the gem system, but Street Fighter Cross Tekken features so many system mechanics that it's kind of hard to believe. Uh, normally Street Fighter games or even Capcom fighting games in the past feature a system mechanic, like one highlight of the game. Like for Street Fighter 4, for example, it's the focus attack. For, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, it's X-Factor. For Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, it's parrying. However, Street Fighter Cross Tekken is looking to integrate a, a bunch of system mechanic changes. For those that don't know, there's the Cross Assault mode, there's the mode that allows you to enter Pandora, there's now the Gem System, uh, there's the Tag mechanic after you do a chain combo and bring in your other character. There is just so many things in Street Fighter Cross Tekken's system that it can be a little mind-blowing. And at the same time, I think it's... It's hard to understand from a viewer's perspective. Um, from a lot of people that I remember reading impressions and information from, Street Fighter Cross Tekken is a game that's hard to watch. It's hard to gather when you're f like physically just watching it, but when you actually put your hands on the game, it makes way more sense. And I think that's really true for this game. However, I think that these changes, I don't know if it's going in the right direction for Street Fighter Cross Tekken because I haven't played the latest builds of the game or what the final build is going to entail. But from my impressions, and you guys have probably seen the previous Street Fighter Cross Tekken videos I did from E3 2011, that, that build of the game was great. Uh, to be honest, I, I would have been completely happy and fine with that build of Street Fighter Cross Tekken in itself. I think that the E3 build was fun, the Evo build was fairly similar with more characters, um, and the one I recently played, it's it didn't have the gem system yet, so I don't know how to really go into more information about that. But they were changing things. You can tell that they were adjusting the combat. Some of the things that were broken about the original one, they were changing here. And it, it's, it's definitely a much different game. Like, I feel like I've played two different versions of Street Fighter Cross Tekken. But even now... The, uh, the changes they made were good. At the same time, I think it might take a little bit away from the fun factor, but for you for you Street Fighter nuts that like going in about the technical details, in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, after you tag in your next partner, you can literally only do a single move into a special. And before, you were able to do multiple normal moves into specials and keep it going, but they now limited the amount of stuff you can do. So that might be a good thing considering there's so many other options and gameplay modes this game has to offer, but, but we really don't know what's going to happen until we get the final product in our hands to see what the final gameplay system changes are going to be. And that's kind of the big thing with the gem system, so let's move into what the gem system just brought to the table. Street Fighter Cross Tekken gives you three slots to occupy with gems for each character. Now these gems vary depending on which ones you choose and the effects of which they have, but they're, they're governed by six different kinds of categories, and these categories are Attack, Defense, Speed, Cross Gauge, Vitality, and Assist. Now more specifically, if you want to look at one of these individually, the attack ones generally increase the primary effect of your attack by like 10, 20 to 30 percent. Defense is primarily the same thing, but it'll also go into certain elements of damage reduction. And if we go into speed, the speed boost is kind of similar to the previous two. Speed goes up by 10, 15, or 20 percent. But the cross gauge gems more affect your character's meter performance as far as how you gain meter and how you lose meter. So that's a little bit different than physical changes. Vitality gems adjust the amount of health you regain. Most likely you'll be seeing the effect of this gem in red health and recovering that red health. 
but all of these are boost gems. They boost a specific performance stat or an ability of your character or your life bar or meter. But the one that was really concerning when we first heard about the gems is the last one, and it's the assist gems. The assist gems allow players with less skill to get out of some situations that players with high skill put on their opponent. For example, it allows you to auto-block, it allows you to automatically throw escape, and it allows you to have easier inputs while playing. What we recently learned is that the assist gems come with a heavy price. If you auto-block, you lose a large portion of your cross gauge, and if you auto-throw escape, you lose half of it. So it's definitely something that is going to be, have to be taken into consideration. It's good for players that don't like being put in situations where they don't know how to tech throws. But for people that have been playing any fighting games in the past few years or at all, they know how to do these things. So there's really going to be no reason to use assist gems for people that have been around for some time. Uh, the other ones like easier inputs and canceling assists, they, they decrease your attack by 10% during battle. So... I don't know if that's going to be exactly worth it, so I don't think we have much to worry on the assist gem department. But if we take all this into consideration, we now understand that the gems have an activation period or an activation condition, and they do not last the entirety of the match. I believe the maximum lasting amount seems to be 20 seconds for any of the gems, and the lowest is about 10 seconds. So, you don't have to worry about it lasting the entirety of the game, and even in certain situations, you need to do quite specific things to get the gem to actually turn on. Whether it's like blocking a several amounts of moves, connecting with five normal moves, or, you know, getting hit by special moves, you don't have the thing all the time. And that's what really worried me about Street Fighter Cross Tekken initially, is that I thought the gem system was going to give every single person's character something unique that they were going to have all the time. But this makes me feel a little bit better. And it's also the fact that the gem system doesn't, like, extremely change something. Uh, now that we know the assist gems are bar none useless for a lot of players, the other gems, like the boost gems that increase speed and stuff like that, only happen over a period of 10 to 20 seconds, and the increase is about the same. It's like 15 to 20% increase for damage, speed, defense. So, this doesn't affect everything severely, and the only problem with this is that the act of earning gems or using specific gems affects tournament play. And if the tournament doesn't have the certain amount of gems that a player is used to using, well, you've got a problem there. But luckily, there's been an announcement that you don't actually have to use gems in Street Fighter Cross Tekken to, um, to, to initiate a match. Online, there's going to be no mode that will prevent you from using gems. Gems are going to be active all the time, but in tournament play, it might become a standard that gems do not get used. But it's really hard to say what combinations of gems can mostly affect competitive play or casual, and I think that's really where that decision is going to come from. When people actually get their hands on the game and figure out exactly how this affects the person-on-person -person combat. But the big issue that comes after that is the fact that there's going to be DLC-specific gems for Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Uh, if you pre-order from certain areas or different get stores like GameStop or Amazon, you're going to get something different uh, for Street Fighter Cross Tekken gem-wise, like a different pack. You can see the packs on the screen here, and some of them seem pretty unique. Uh, it's kind of hard to say how effective these are going to be in tournament play, however, some of them seem pretty good at first glance, if not better than some of the default gems they were showing, so hopefully there's some gems that we have not seen that are already on the disc and available to everyone, and maybe these gems specifically through DLC are just different because of their, their activation precondition, but we'll have to wait till more gems get announced. But that's going to just about do it for the lot of information that was released for Street Fighter Cross Tekken now. You can find a lot more info and a lot more details on the Gem System announcement at a link below on the Cap Community site. They're doing a very detailed list and accurate breakdown of what the Gem System is affecting, but Street Fighter Cross Tekken really has my attention right now. This game has had me excited for a long time, ever since E3, but I really want to see what the final game actually is going to be like. But more importantly, I want to hear your impressions about the current state of Street Fighter Cross Tekken and the gem system. If you guys could possibly leave a comment below, let me know your impressions. Uh, did you think that the gem system was going to be something way crazier than what it actually ended up being? Is DLC gems pretty much the make it or break it situation for you in purchasing the game or considering it? Things like that. I, I'm really curious to see the community's opinion of Street Fighter Cross Tekken because 
There's a lot of stuff Street Fighter Cross Tekken does really well that could potentially change everything for fighting games, and I think I'm going to talk about that in the next episode about their what I think their goal is with the gem system. But thanks very much for watching, everyone. This has been Maximilian, and I'll see you next time.